Hi, it's Christopher Dean, and today we're going to be looking at a feature that's coming out in Sketch 58 called Smart Loud. Okay, and we're jumping straight into Sketch. This is actually a beta version of Sketch 58 that we're going to have a play around with and see if we can get this Smart Loud working. Uh, there's a few elements that would look familiar if you've been watching my Design System tutorial series that you can watch on this link or this link, depending on where that ends up. There's a min width button, a button that has a width that is 16 pixels either side of the label. There's a card with a few things in it and some tabs down the bottom. Now, I'm gonna grab this label and this background. I'm gonna go and create a symbol and you can see the smart layout settings here. This has got no layout. This is left to right layout. I'm going to choose horizontally center layout and see what that does. Now, if I just go into that symbol, zoom in, let's see what's happened. Okay, so the smart layout icon up there is telling us that it's horizontal and centered. Right, let's go back and see if it actually works. I'm going to type in to the overrides. Hello there. How are you today? Question mark. And that didn't work, but let's try it with this one. I'm going to create a symbol. Call this button auto. Select left to right layout and go OK. Let's go into that symbol. Okay, it's done the same thing, but this time we've got an arrow pointing to the right. There's no resizing on any of those. Let's go back and type in something here. I might as well just copy and paste this. Okay, and that did work. So that's just telling us something, right? Uh, you can't really have the style of button with a text field that's already taking up that width with 16 pixels on either side. But you can set up one that does this. You're just going to have to scale it out until it gets to a certain point and then override its label. And then it'll snap into shape that way. So that's okay. Let's go down to the tab. I'm going to select the label and the tab. Create a symbol. I'm going to call this one tab active. with left to right layout. When I do that, I'm going to grab it out of that folder and then delete that folder. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but call that tab inactive. Get rid of that folder. Let's actually grab those and those up there as well. It's going to save where I'm at. Let's make this a symbol as well and see if the symbols inside it, when their labels are overridden, push the next tab along. Okay, tabs, left to right layout. Okay. All right, so you have one symbol with a couple of nested symbols inside it. Let's grab that, move that up there. Okay, inside there, I'm gonna go pin to edge and then fix size, width and height. I'm gonna do the same thing for this. And let's see if that worked. I'm gonna enter tab one there. Cool. And tab two. Okay, now we know that that works. Let's see what we can do with this card. Okay, create a symbol of the whole card. And I'm going to select top to bottom layout. Because I think that's going to help push everything down. Let's delete this folder before we do. Okay, so now it's just floating around, not really doing much. Let's go in. I'm going to 
grab those layers and pull them out. Okay, that's set correctly. I'm gonna pin that to the top left right. And I might just select vertical top to bottom as well on that. So I've got that happening, that happening. Everything inside here is going to behave this way. This should get vertical top to bottom as well. And then this will be horizontal left to right. Okay, I'm going to give you this file as well so you can play around with it and get the same pinning settings that I have. Let's just see what that did. So let's put some text into the heading that makes sure it goes over two lines. That goes over two lines. <laughs> okay, we need some more words. And is very long. And that didn't quite work out. So let's go in and see what we can do. All right, this text probably needs a vertical top to bottom. And that pushed the text down below it. So that worked. We just need to make this get pushed down as well. Okay, if we look at the stacking, that text comes down. Then we've got byline there. Hmm. I think the byline would have to be in the text folder. So I'm just going to drag that into there. Let's move it into here. <laughs> it's pushing it out of the boundary of the card. That seems to be working a little bit better. I can resize that, but that should be resizing for me. What if I place everything into a folder? and make this vertical top to bottom. Text that is very long and goes over two lines. And is very long. Ah, okay, so now it's working. We just had to go and reset a few things to make that behave. Can you still scale it? Yep. And if we go back to the card and make this heading the same text as that, we'll see what happens. Okay, we can see that this is becoming a viable replacement for Anima's Auto Layout plugin, which is a plugin I love dearly, by the way. That's what I've been using to accomplish this type of thing up until now. You know, native ways of doing things are always favorable, at least for me anyway, uh, especially if you're running a design system like I am at work. Uh, we want to decouple it from as many plugins as possible, so it just relies on itself. And that's a good segue into what the next video is gonna be. I'm gonna be taking a look at Sketch for Teams and seeing how that compares to Abstract. I mean, I know that I've got a long way to go, but it's nice to see Sketch bringing those types of features and solutions to us all in one place. Uh, until then, have a good week. I'll see you next time. Bye.